Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today I want to talk about how to write a complex number in the polar form. So you can see that this number is written in the rectangular form and so that we can actually just write it as eight minus ai, right? As x plus yi. And so you can see that the x is the real part right here. This is the real part. And then what about the imaginary part? The imaginary part, the Y is the imaginary part here. You can see that this is the number that's attached to the I, right? Okay, so now uh, just based on this, by just comparing them, you can see what X is equal to, what Y is equal to. So that tells us, that tells us that, um, that X, is actually equal to eight. As you can see, that's really just this number right here. And then what about the Y? The Y is the number that's attached to the I. So the number attached to the I is negative eight. So you have Y is equal to negative eight. Okay, so we have those two numbers. You can actually plot this point on the complex plane if you want, right? We can actually do that, even though that may not be always necessary. But sometimes I will just do that because it will just make the uh, the later calculation more convenient sometimes. Okay, so let me just just show you what's going on right here. If you are, um, this is the complex plane. So the vertical axis is actually the imaginary axis, and then this uh, horizontal axis is the real axis. And so if you have x equals 8, right, the real part is 8, then you just go to 8 units in the positive real axis direction. This is 8 right here. And then what about the y? The y is negative 8, so you go down in the uh, in the vertical direction, right? So you go down, and then you get negative 8 right here. So where is the point? The point is actually this point right here. This is 8 negative eight. Okay, so now, um, how do we write this complex number in the polar form? We are gonna use two things. Let's just recall them right here first. Okay, so let's just recall. One thing that we, um, actually there are two things that we need. So one thing is the R, okay? The other one is the angle, the theta. Okay, so how do we figure out the R? The R is actually given by this formula right here, which is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So that's pretty simple, right? So that's one uh, one thing that we need. The other thing that we need is to have a relation between the data and then also the x and y. So we use this formula right here, which is tangent data is equal to y over x, okay? This is just assuming that x is non-zero. Because if x is zero, then you actually do not really need to use this relation right here. There is an easy way to figure out what data is equal to. Okay, so that's just those two things that we need that um, so that that will allow us to figure out the r and the data. Okay, so now what do we do now? What we are going to do now is that we are gonna use this formula here to figure out what r is equal to. Uh, how do we do it? It's just done by plugging in the x and the y, right? So now for the r, it's equal to the square root of what? The square plus the other thing square. Okay, so the x is going to be the number eight, right? So you just plug x in here and then also plug the y in here so that's the negative eight okay and then you do the calculation here it becomes obvious what the answer is right um, we have 64 plus 64 so that's actually twice the 64 right and then you know that 64 is actually a perfect square, so you can take it outside the square root, which will give us 8 times the square root of 2. So r is equal to 8 times the square root of 2. So that's r. And then how do we figure out the, uh, the data? We are going to use this formula right here. So we are going to write down the tangent of data is equal to what is y. y is going to be negative 8, right? So we have negative 8 here. And then divided by uh, the 
x, right? So you just get the x here. You know what that is equal to, right? That's equal to negative 1. So tangent theta is equal to negative 1. And that tells you that the reference angle is going to be pi over 4, okay, 45 degrees. Right? And then we actually have two different quadrants that we have for tangent that's being negative. So you know that for uh, tangent is negative for quadrant two or quadrant four. Okay, but you know that that's, um, we cannot just pick two different quadrants based on the point that we plotted here. You can see that this number actually belongs in the quadrant four, so we are not going to take this quadrant two. So we can actually just cross that out. We are going to be taking quadrant four. Okay, so that's quite simple. That's why uh, I said that plotting the point will actually help with the calculation later on, right? Which is to be used here. So we determined that the angle is going to be in quadrant four and its reference angle is going to be power four. So we can actually just come up with the angle now. So data is equal to what? Seven power over four. There are other choices too, but I'm just going to use this one. This one is actually simple to use. So right now we are basically ready because we already figured out what data is equal to. We figure out what R is equal to. So all we need to do is to start putting it in the polar form. So we have eight minus eight I is equal to now, uh, what is the polar form? It's R times cosine data plus I times sine data. Okay, and then now you just fill in the R, you just fill in the data, and then you have the answer, which is what? What is R? R is going to be 8 square root of 2, so we get 8 square root of 2 here. And then now the brackets with the cosine, the cosine of what? 7 pi over 4 plus I times 7 pi over 4. And so that's the complex number in the polar form. The i is right here, as you can see. Or sometimes people also just write it in the really short form, which is 8 times square root of 2, and then the cis, and then the 7 pi over 4. And as you can see, the c stands for the cosine, the i is the i, the imaginary unit, and then the s stands for the sine function. And so you can also write it in this form. OK, so that's quite simple, right? To help me make math learning available to everyone, please share my videos to others and subscribe to my channel. It will give me support to make more videos. Let's work together to help students and children learn math more easily. Thank you for watching.